This is KVU News at 6. Fate decided. What's next for the dogs involved in an attack that killed a young woman? A few isolated showers today. Additional rain chances for your weekend forecast. Plus, why you might see more police on, officers than usual on Lake Austin this weekend. Good evening, everyone. I'm Terry Gruca. And I'm Tina Shively. Justice for the family of a 36 year old woman mauled and killed by a pack of dogs in Northeast Travis County. The family of Erin McCleskey and the owners and caretakers of those dogs all appeared in the Travis County courtroom today. That's where we find KVU's Chris Betts. She has the latest on the judge's decision whether or not to euthanize those dogs. Chris? Well, Zena, the judge would not allow cameras into the courtroom, but if you could have seen and heard what was said in here, you'd probably be shocked. The victim's family certainly was, as the dog's owners and caretakers went before the judge and said that Aaron should have never been there in the first place and that they, the dog's owners, along with the dogs, are the victims in this case. Now, the dog's owners and caretakers sat on one side of the court. They are all related, while the victim's family, Aaron McCleskey's family, sat on the other side. During testimony, animal control deputies said that they were confident that all of McCleskey's injuries were caused by those six dogs on the property. The dog's caretaker said that there were signs posted clearly, though, on the locked gate that said no trespassing. They said it wasn't the dog's fault. They were only protecting their puppies and that they are the victims because they are the ones that had to find McCleskey's body and she should have never been there. McCleskey was a process server. And she was trying to serve papers that night. The state's attorney then told the judge that it seems like the dog owner showed no remorse and that the law says the dogs should be euthanized. The law is pretty clear that if a death occurs that the dog should be put down and I you know I didn't really feel that their testimony was relevant. So once again, the judge has ruled that all six dogs in that attack will be euthanized. And coming up tonight on the night beat, what animal control tells us this means for animal owners, even those that have gates and no trespassing signs on their property. We're also going to learn why the victim, Erin McCleskey, had no blood on her body after that attack by the time EMS crews arrived. For now, reporting live from the Travis County Courthouse, Chris Betts, KV News. Disturbing case. Chris, appreciate the update. A joint operation by DPS and the Travis County Sheriff's Office leads to the arrest of five members of an Austin-based drug trafficking ring. Five search warrants in Travis County were served, and among other fines, officers seized three pounds of methamphetamines and half a pound of cocaine. These five men were arrested on state charges for engaging in organized criminal activity for the manufacture and delivery of a controlled substance. During a marathon meeting that lasted until 3 o'clock this morning, the Austin City Council voted to move forward with a $720 million bond package. It will focus on improving eight major corridors inside the city. KVU's Ashley Godot joins us now live from one of them. She's in North Austin along Burnett Road. And Ashley, traffic is pretty thick out there right now, right? It is, Tina. In fact, you can see that that traffic starting to line up or, or starting to move now. Um, but according to the mayor, a Texas A&M study found that Austin drivers spend $1,200 a month in gas and expenses associated with sitting in traffic. The bond he's proposing and that council endorsed last night is aimed at bringing that number down. While Austin has grown a lot since 1996, it seems its streets have not. And Austin, over the last 20 years, has only done bonds, transportation bonds, in the total amount in that 20 years at $640 million. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons why we have the challenges that we have. That number, money voters approved to spend on improving roads and transportation, could more than double. Council voted to support a $720 million bond proposal. The bulk of the money would be spent improving eight major corridors. Over half the people in our city live within uh, a mile and a half of these corridors. Over a third of the people in our city live within a half mile of these corridors. These are the roads that everybody is on a lot of the time. So what roads are we talking about? The bond proposal allocates $500 million to make improvements to Airport Boulevard, Bernard Road, Guadalupe Street, North and South Lamar, MLK, and Riverside. Council also added a corridor in South Austin to the list, but haven't decided which one. It will either be Congress, Manchac, Slaughter, or William Cannon. 
The projects will improve traffic flow by adding turn lanes, medians, and queue jumps for buses. No lanes will be taken to make the changes, and lanes will be added to MLK. That money will also pay for sidewalk improvements. Another $20 million will be used on the bicycle master plan, adding bike lanes to the corridors. $100 million will be used to create continuous movement intersections on Highway 360, plus improve the 620-22-22 intersection. The city calls this regional pain points. $30 million will go toward the urban trails master plan and $15 million for the Vision Zero plan. Council made changes to how the last $55 million will be spent. Now $27.5 million will go towards improving sidewalks identified as having the highest needs. The other half of the money will be divided evenly among all 10 districts and spent on sidewalks in the safe walk to schools routes. Now, if voters approve the bond, it will cost the median homeowner about $5 a month on their tax bill. But council still has to approve calling for that bond election. The mayor says he expects much debate on what the language of the bond will be. Reporting live in North Austin, Ashley Good OK View News. Yeah, definitely more debate to come. Ashley, let's take a live look outside through one of our tower cameras tonight. Another sunny day, but you see a few clouds out there. Or any rain in store for your weekend? KV meteorologist Albert Ramon joins us now with what we're tracking. And as a matter of fact, a couple of showers right now on Max Storm Doppler radar. One to the south of Giddings, the other one south of Smithville in Bastrop County. But we're quiet here in the Austin area, but overall more clouds today kept the temperatures down. Today, the coolest of the last seven afternoons, and we'll see that trend continue into the weekend with more cloud cover and a chance of rain for both Saturday and Sunday. We'll look at the hour by hour forecast for your weekend coming up. All right, Albert, thank you so much. Well, 4th of July weekend is right around the corner, and that means fireworks are already going on sale. The Austin Fire Department wants to remind you, though, that fireworks are illegal within the city limits. However, some items are allowed inside Austin. They include the list on your screen there, wooden stick sparklers, smoke bombs, glow worms and snakes and poppers and snappers. These are not technically classified as common fireworks, according to the U.S. Department of Transportation, but officials urge anyway you should be careful when you use them. If you're planning to hit the water tonight, make sure you have all your safety gear and a designated driver. Operation Dry Water will be in effect. That means police will be patrolling the lakes heavily as we get closer to the holiday weekend. All new at 6, KVU's Nicole Rosales rode along with APD to see what they're looking for when you head out. This is a nice lake, constant level, easy to get on. Lake Austin attracts hundreds. We're retired, and so it's nice to come on the weekdays. The boating spot will be extra busy in the coming days leading up to 4th of July. That's why police will be on high alert as Operation Dry Water begins Friday night. Hey, good morning, guys. Good, hello. Good. It's a national campaign put on by law enforcement to educate oh, boaters about new. safety Sorry. and deter yeah, BWIs, boating minutes. while intoxicated. We all know that it delays your response time, your vision. So that obviously causes and presents a, another danger to other boaters out here. The number of people who have died out here over the years, really, or been badly injured, mostly because boat drivers are drinking. Last year, 17% of fatal boating accidents across the nation were attributed to alcohol use. Police are trained to look for signs that a driver could be intoxicated. A boat doesn't have their lights on or one of the fuses blew out or whatnot will make that stop. So APD is set up with four patrol boats, housing one DWI officer in each. Can you do a breathalyzer? Well, we can. Those in the lake say it makes them feel much safer. We certainly don't mind being pulled over. And it's not just detecting well, drunk drivers. All safety checks, such as boat functionality, will be taken. Awesome. And then uh, your, your fire extinguisher. This boater was cited over $200 for not having a child vest on board. Anyone under the age of 13 actually is required to wear a life jacket. Police say safety is their priority. To have fun, but be responsible. In Austin, Nicole Rosales, KV News. And so nice to see those lakes so full. Operation Dry Water begins tonight at 9 with no refusal, and it will continue until June 26th. Police will focus on Lake Austin, which is that constant lake level, Ladybird Lake, and Decker Lake. Okay, you've seen this all day long. It's shaking the economic world, affecting countries far from Great Britain. Yeah, how politicians across the globe could be affected by Brexit. Plus, a big raise for Mark Ott. How much Austin's city manager is now making?